Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Joe Glavin, City Floor Supply, here on uh, Facebook Live. Uh, today we're going to talk about um, various edgers, whether those edgers be uh, your standard edgers like Clark 7R or B2, or a radiator edger, or a combination machine like the uh, Logler Flip. So we'll get started with the Flip. Um, I did want to we're going to do like an official kind of unboxing on these two units. These are just out of the brown box. Um, we'll flip them open and, and set them up. And we're also going to uh, set this unit up, the flip. And there's not really a whole lot of setup to do on the Galaxy um, RS100, which is a radiator edger. So we have a radiator edger, a radiator edger, standard edger combo, and then two standard edgers. All right, so we'll get started with the flip. Um, the flip, the flip is a belt driven edger, so um, it does have uh, carbon brushes, um, it has a magnetic switch, um, it does have uh, a, a style of plastic, you'll see this style of plastic a lot on uh, Festool tooling, um, it is kind of bulletproof plastic it just doesn't break uh, you can drop you can drop it you can do all kinds of things to it it will not break um, it does make the unit fairly light um, this area here this section that the motor is sitting on that is yellow um, it is metal I'm assuming it's aluminum uh, it feels like cast aluminum um, the unit has adjustable wheels it's a 150 millimeter pad and most guys will run this on hook and loop paper but you can use um, the, the bolt that it comes with to put uh, bolt on paper you can put a piece of felt on this so we're just gonna run it with hook and loop paper but I did want to change adjust the wheels I did want to change out the long nose for the short nose the unit also comes with a, a, a third nose and uh, we call that the corner attachment, and it's uh, three and a half inches wide. We had one here. Fortunately, we shipped it out yesterday. Um, but it's a three inch, three and a half inch wide, or 93 millimeters, somewhere 90 millimeters. Um, does fit between spindles, and it does get pretty close into the corners. That doesn't come with. The it does machine. not it's come with the machine. Right. right, but you can get it. So, um, nice thing about this dust bag. Um, this machine picks up dust. Um, this this bag inflates. It it picks up for an edger. This is probably the best dust pickup for an edger that we have without any kind of vacuum assist. So um, we can rotate this simply by pulling up on the detent spring and get it out of the way if we're up against the wall and we're close in a closet, that kind of thing. Um, it's a nice little feature. This also comes out. Uh, this bag comes off and you can hook in a vacuum system if you want. So I'm just taking it off now. It just, to me, it makes it easier to change out the nose. So I'll just throw this out front. So normally I just flip it over, obviously unplugged. Um, the unit comes with every tool you need to change it up. So we're gonna take off these little aluminum clamps here. And the clamps really just hold the base, this base onto the casting. And then this little eccentric, we're gonna loosen up and let it flop away. This is our tensioning eccentric. So pretty simple, actually. Um, you Once you line up the belt, you just kind of push it on and flip it over, and uh, the long nose comes off. And then we'll put the short nose on. You have the long nose, you have a wall bracket on there, which is a guide to, you know, you'll, it'll keep the paper 
from cutting in the baseboard, it's adjustable. Uh, if you're gonna leave the shoe or the baseboard on. Uh, it's a nice feature, it does keep the unit from digging in to uh, baseboard wall, shoe molding, or quarter round. Um, yeah, and toe kicks. So, uh, take the long unit off, that will go under uh, radiators, that kind of thing. Uh, this is pretty much the standard nose. Um, we'll assemble this, we just kinda, I just, I don't know if you can see that, but I just kinda put it on. And then flip it around. And once we have it on, you know, we, I know that we have it on because I can't like push the unit forward on the mounting screws or where the mounting screws go. So put the aluminum retaining clips back on. So like pretty much everything from Logler, it's just really machined well. Um, tolerances are nice and tight. So before I tighten those down, <clears throat> I'm just gonna take this eccentric, push it in, get the belt nice and tight, and then tighten that down. Just hand tight is enough. So now we have the nose on. Um, you can flip this over. You can put a board on top of here and kind of see how the wheels are lining up to make the pad touch the floor and where they touch the floor. So we'll go ahead and sand. Uh, we'll see how it's set up from the factory. Usually they're set up pretty good. Uh, but this is where we would adjust our wheels. So these uh, hand knobs come down and then the screws, the shaft is a threaded rod um, to bring the caster up and down. And then you just lock it back in. So uh, if it ever gets stuck, this tool does just about everything on this machine as far as a nut, a bolt, or a screw. Or not a nut, but bolts and screws. So we'll go ahead and sand with it. See how she looks. So I'm in the um, city floor repair shop. We have pretty much every cable or conversion you can think of. Um, this does come with a twist lock cable and uh, or a twist lock plug on your cable. Even though it's a brand new machine and it's a magnetic switch, still keep it down to start it. cutting a little steep on the edge. I might bring that back a little bit. Um, and we can do that right here. One of the nice things about it, we'll just bring up the wheels. And we're just guessing here. And what we're trying to do is bring the cut back a little bit on the plate. lock that in and again it's just hook and loop paper um, you will find over time that this part of the hook and loop or I guess that's the hook 
would uh, will wear out, but it's replaceable. Um, you can just scrape it off and then uh, put a, put a new one on, and they're available. And we stock those. Yep. So that's the Logler uh, flip. I don't know if anybody has any questions on it. Feel free. Um, again, it's belt driven, so it's fairly quiet. Uh, what it it has great dust pickup and uh, very easily adjusted. Velcro hook and loop. You don't have to worry about bolts. Um, magnetic switch. So once this cuts off, if you pop a breaker, uh, you won't, and you go to set reset the breaker, the machine won't be on. Um, it'll disconnect. That's an automatic with that magnetic switch. So it's a nice safety feature. Um, that's it. That's all I got on the flip. The dust pickup on this is, is absolutely excellent. And you didn't really notice, but anybody who's run edgers, uh, that was quiet extremely quiet and uh, that is a true benefit to this uh, which is called a finesse edger that flip is is a very good edger toe kicks on steps uh, and you know for a uh, uh, a novice uh, it's not a, a real aggressive wood eater uh, so it, it's definitely a good edger for somebody you know who is uh, apprentice or learning but then as a finesse edger, it's great for places where, uh, you know, you're, you're working in, in uh, you know, like on steps and that kind of thing, where you don't want a tremendous amount of stock removal. And with great dust pickup, uh, you know, that's an awesome place for this edger to be used. All right, we're going to move on. Um, we have a true radiator edger here. Uh, this is the Galaxy RS100, and a uh, very simple machine. Guys that have ever, in this area anyway, I don't, I don't know how far IOBI got with shipping equipment, but the IOBI um, and the old floor style radiator edgers, this is a similar design. Um, it's actually pretty simplistic, uh, but what we do have, which was you know, 10 years ago, probably uncommon in a radiator edger is a seven inch pad. So most radiator edgers back um, a while ago were five inch, uh, five inch discs. Um, this is a seven inch pad. So this will allow you to use your standard edger paper. Um, it's typically a seven eighths center hole on this, but I'm sure five sixteenths would work as well. Yeah, this is 7 eighths. So it's similar to the Clark 7R um, paper retaining bolt. And it is um, the Clark 7R style edger pad with the uh, 7 eighths insert for the paper retaining washer. So this unit um, will take a 7 inch disc and pretty much that's it. Um, you can see just from the dust that I picked up off of the um, disassembly and inspection table here, that that is going to be our cut profile. Um, that's how the edger was sitting. That's what the wheels have it set for. Uh, if you put a new disc on, I would probably just um, sand some abrasive paper so that you reset it and the pad to the way the wheels are cutting and get that profile. Um, pretty simple. I did loosen these up. Just wanted you to see that it is also a belt driven unit. So, and the unique thing about this belt driven unit is it's a poly V belt. And um, anyone that's ever converted their old American 8 um, from a poly V or a regular V belt, straight V belt pulleys to uh, poly V's know that the reason the car industry did it, you get a greater transfer of power from the um, motor pulley to that is 
what the load is going to see and you get better torque. Um, a lot of the Galaxy machine, Sander machines, um, the 2000 plus, the BD12, the Omega 8, and the 506 are all sanders from Galaxy, uh, walk behind sanders that use poly V belt technology. So the poly V belt, it's not going to slip. Um, it's a machine pulley. Uh, it's driven off of this motor and, uh, you know, just well-built machine. We've got, um, a machine aluminum poly V pulley down inside, probably really hard to see, but underneath the pad. So a good system. We have an aluminum cover plate. And some castle cap nuts. So that's it. So we'll, uh, we'll throw a piece of paper on it and uh, we'll go ahead and edge. Again, no dust pickup, no dust pickup on this. So uh, we'll be spitting dust everywhere. Let me get a piece of edge of paper. That's a straight blade plug. So pretty simple, but effective. Again, um, no dust collection, but does the job. Uh, saves your knuckles from scraping under radiators and toe kicks. And uh, you know, just a simple machine and uh, a design that's been around for a long time, but that's the Galaxy RS100 radiator edger. Okay. So, um, both of these are American Sanders uh, edgers, B2 and a 7R. And for the 7R, um, they both use a blown plastic case um, to fit, whether it's 7R or, or B2. Um, if you haven't run or created your uh, edgers in a case, you really should. Um, it saves on the handles. It saves from breaking the um, uh, light covers, uh, dinging up the roller guards, just everything about it. Uh, where the castings are thin around the edger pad, uh, the case really does uh, help protect it. Uh, keep the cord keeps your wrenches, just kind of everything that you would normally leave on a job, you can pack into this case. And they are available um, even you know without the new one. But the new ones come with, um, you can put edger discs and edger paper in the side here. So good units. Uh, they came out with the case a while ago. So, you know, the 7R, it is, you know, it's a gear driven unit. Um, it has great dust pickup for this style edger. Back in the day, B2 edger, 
didn't have as good a dust pickup as the 7R. Um, they did increase the fan size on the 7R or on the B2. Um, 7R fan size, probably about six inches in diameter. Um, very good dust pickup, but now they have vacuum assist on these. Uh, they have a swivel elbow on them uh, for your vacuum hose. Just a real nice design, very simple. Uh, the cuff for the bags goes right on. Um, it is, you know, a twist lock, 15 amp plug. It is a four pole motor. Um, it means that there are brushes, carbon brushes on front and back, north and south and east and west. So there are four carbon brushes on all of your seven R's unless it's uh, 50 years old. I think the first set of super sevens that came out were two pole motors. So these are all four pole motors. Uh, we see that a lot in the shop where the two brushes in the front and back of this vent and the rear vent are the ones that get changed and the side ones underneath the switch and this access plate never get changed. So it is a four pole motor. If you have a 7R, you have four brushes to change out. And you wanna change out your brushes when you start to lose power. You can feel that. You can probably see it when it's arcing a lot. You get um, a lot of those like welding arcs that would come out of it, you'll hear it. Um, you'll light up a room when the room is dark and you're lighting up the room, it's time to change your brushes. Um, so it's a seven inch pad. Um, it is a seven eighths center hole, very similar to uh, the radiator edger that we just ran. So a seven eighths pre-cut edger disc will fit in here. And, you know, that detent there is seven eighths, um, fits inside that pad. Uh, you get a seven eighths paper in there without wrinkling. And you can kind of all, also see, since we brought this out and I had it setting upright, that that's the dust mark. And we actually do that a lot in the shop, is we'll put chalk on here just to see where it's cutting. And that dust mark is the fan pattern. That is gonna be the cut pattern when we go to edge with it. So um, American Sanders Clark has gotten very good at setting up their edgers out of the box, uh, which is great. It takes less time to set up the edger. We don't have to adjust the pads typically. Um, if you do need to adjust how this unit cuts, particularly when you put a new pad on or you end up putting in new caster somewhere down along the line, you're gonna need to know that. Um, this unit, adjusts independently so your left and right casters will raise and lower in their own system so you have a locking nut here you would loosen this up and send this up and down and then if you send this down it makes it cut harder on the opposite side yes so we have a question from Stephen Albert Joe what do you guys think of the steel flex plates on the 7r um, well, the steel, the steel flex plates are an aftermarket item um, for, I think they're great for hook and loop paper. Um, I think that the cut you get from a vulcanized rubber pad, uh, particularly, I would say if you're cutting, you know, old paint or, you know, a badly cupped or crowned floor that, that you're still better off with this pad, but they have their place. Um, it makes paper change quicker and easier. I always thought that the hook and loop additions to these units that were separate pads that you bolted on, they were real stiff. Uh, I don't think that they worked well. I think that they created issues with melting and they also created issues with a fan effect. In other words, they would blow the dust um, because they, they, they just weren't tight up against the rubber pad. Um, the, the new steel hook and loop Velcro discs eliminate that. So um, I don't know how they are for the hook and loop burning up because I haven't run them, but uh, I'm sure that that flex really helps with digging. Um, I have seen them. They do spin on fairly easy. 
you can spin off an edger pad and spin them on. Um, they have a hub on them that spins on very similar to the back end of this pad here. So um, I hope that answers your question. I haven't run them uh, recently. We did have them several years ago, um, but haven't brought them in since, uh, since the fire. Good? Yep. Yeah. So um, again, these independently adjust. When we get to the B2, you'll see the difference. Um, these units, you know, they've been around a long time. Um, this uh, is a one speed unit, whereas the B2 is dual speed. Um, you know, there's pros and cons to that. Uh, it is a separated cord. Uh, back in the day, the 7R always came with the cord attached. Um, it's mainly because it was a rental industry um, machine that Clark would put in the rental stores and then you wouldn't leave the court at the job but these are these are uh, separated out now and they're twist lock plugs they are gear driven meaning um, I had an armature here you see an armature Okay, so quick little, this is a B2 armature, but it's the same concept. Um, you have four brushes that run on this commutator and you have a vacuum fan and a motor cooling fan. And then you have a gear. This gear happens to be pressed on for the B2. The 7R gear is threaded on. So the reason I bring that up, if you are changing a 7R pad, you want to make sure that when you stop, I usually put a stopper, some sort of a screwdriver or something inside this cavity so that I'm locking this fan in place because I need to pry against it when I take this pad off. So because this gear, this pinion gear on the 7R is threaded, when you change this pad, if you don't knock it quick and get it released and it starts to spin on you, there's a good chance that you will be spinning off the gear. And if that happens, you have to disassemble the whole thing. You have to take the bottom out, you have to take the gearbox cover apart and remove the bottom section so that you can re-thread this gear on because the gear that is on here is spinning this gear. So this is the drive gear or the bull gear and the pinion gear is spinning this one. Um, the pad is spun on to this jack shaft. So this pad is threaded onto this piece. This piece is coming out of the bottom of the edger box or the gear box, or the gear cover plate and there's a bearing on it. So. When you spin the pad off, you're spinning this bull gear, you can spin off this pinion gear because this pinion gear's threading is left-handed. So when you're running the machine, it's always tight. When you're taking a pad off, you're going the opposite way and you will spin that gear off. You won't do it to the B2 because the B2 is keyed in and that gear is pressed on but the 7R is threaded and you will spin it off if you're having difficulty getting the pad off. Um, so just food for thought. Um, it comes with a 916 wrench and holder in the back. So we're going to actually set, we're going to, I don't really need to set it up because I can see that it's cutting pretty well. Uh, we're going to put a piece of paper on it and uh, we'll take it over there to the test area and go ahead and edge with it. So for um, just little things, changing, changing paper. Um, I always change paper on 
these style edgers that take a mechanical fastener to put paper on. I always change the paper with the machine on its side. Um, why do I do that? Because if you change paper with the machine up, two things happen here. One, you have the switch right down here that if something is on the floor and you forget to unplug the machine while you're changing paper, which I don't think a whole lot of people do, um, you could, you could turn the machine on while you're changing paper and that would hurt. Um, the second reason is I don't want any dust and material from my old piece of paper falling down into that shaft. Right, that jack shaft. As I push the screw in and out of there and it's upright and I pack material down in there, eventually I'm gonna strip that out. Um, the screw will strip out and the screw is gonna act like a press and just keep compacting material down there. And then you're gonna wonder why your paper is spinning because the, the washer, so what happens is people cut the bolt down and they keep cutting the bolt down and then eventually the bolt doesn't fit anymore. Um, and it wasn't the bolt that was the problem. It was inside there that was filled up. So if that does get filled up, you can always drill it out and retap it uh, it's a 3 8 16 on the 7R, and the B2 is 5 16 18. So, so, yeah, I just change it. It's just a little thing, and, you know, anybody that's running an edger six, five, six hours a day, you know, you're changing a bunch of paper every day. By the end of the week, that's a lot of material that can get pressed down in there. Yes? So Doug says hello. Hello. And then Peter says, I always unplug the machine when changing paper and flip it over to tap out excess dust in the paper. Grid. That's it. That's the way to do it. You know, it, it, it will, if it saves you, if flipping the machine over on the side saves you uh, one change on that jack shaft, uh, it's not that the jack shafts are terribly expensive. It's getting them out and putting the new ones back in. That's the expensive part. <laughs> So, um, you know, you pull the gear off, you pull the bearings off, put new bearings on, you put the same gear back on, press it back into the machine, into the gearbox cover, and it all takes time. So doing that out in the field is almost impossible. You'd have to bring that back to your garage or your shop to do that or bring it in here. But if it saves you changing that jack shaft, you've done yourself a service. Um, I've also seen people, you know, put four or five pieces of paper on and then just tear off the disc when it wears out so that they have a fresh disc underneath. That does a couple things. Um, one, it can wear out this washer and make it paper thin. Two, it changes the geometry of the machine. You've created four or five pieces here that now act as a fan and your edger dust pickup will be terrible. Um, and third, as you sand, you're creating heat, and eventually that that fourth piece that's all the way at the bottom is gonna, that grit that's on there, if it's 100 grit or 80 grit or 36 grit, is probably not gonna be 36 grit or 50 grit by the time you get to it. Yes. Doug asks, Joe, how often should you have the grease replaced in the gearbox? Um, it's not a bad idea to look at it at least every six months. I'd say if you're running the edger, you know, let's just say you're running the edger 25 to 30 hours a week. Um, you know, that's uh, 120 hours a month. I would say the, the grease is actually designed to uh, stiffen up when it's not in use and gets cold and then the flow a little bit as the edger gets used. So if it has gotten debris and stuff in it and it doesn't, um, the viscosity in it doesn't change, then it's time to change the, the grease. You really won't know that unless you you take this screw off here. This is the um, screw to put grease in and you could put a uh, Zerk fitting in there and shoot grease in. Um, it's the same thread as a Zerk fitting. Um, you don't want to over grease your edger box, your gear box, because then you'll spit it out through the bearings. So it's a tough, 
once every six months, I'd look at it. Uh, if I'm not seeing grease up on these gearbox, like this gear, you can see this gear inside there. And if you're not seeing grease, like on the edges here, after you stop it in a day's use, then you probably don't have enough grease in there. And that's just a guess by me. I, you know, I would say after a year, I would probably change it. Um, the gears in the 7R and the B2 are the same now. They used to be um, a, a cast iron gear in the B2, and now they're uh, brass in both. The 7R was always just brass or bronze. I don't know. Yeah, brass. So um, we're going to sand with this and see how she's cutting. I am not going to put any vacuum on it, but I do have a dust bag that will fit it. So this is the Clark dust bag. It's um, it's got a uh, rubber cuff that fits over top, and it will hook in to this little um, slot. There's a a cuff in the or a bump in the back here that fits in there, keeps it on. Um, it does have a zipper access for emptying, and just so you know, we do set up edgers before we ship them or send them out to a customer so if you do see a little bit of dust on it um, or it does look like it's been used that's because we we do what i'm doing now we set it up check it make sure it turns on so that it's ready to use when you get it so that little pop that you heard that is the cuff setting into that little groove that i was talking about Okay, so, you know, I've got the, the light that says I have power to the unit. Um, I have an on uh, lamp that is on when I have power to the unit as well. Now Clark does make an LED unit, uh, an LED lamp that fits in this socket for both the B2 and the 7R. Um, and it does cast a nice, a nice bit of light. So hopefully in the future, they'll be including that in the, um, in the edgers when they ship new. That is really cut. I'm going to sand this stain just so you can see the fan mark. So that's actually good. Um, I would adjust this edger. We have it cutting at more of like an 11 o'clock instead of 12 or 1. You know, I've always set them up so that they're at 12, and I mean, you know, 12 on the clock, or one o'clock, somewhere here to here, and that's for dust pickup. You know, as that, as that pad sands and comes around this way, you know, the, the edger's moving this direction, I get better dust pickup if I'm sanding kind of over here, but I'm still not ruining or affecting how close I'm getting to the wall. So, you know, if I were to have a wall here, I could still get there by having a 12 to one o'clock. So how would I do that? I would just simply take this ring, undo it, and then counterclockwise on this caster and bring it up just a little bit. And that'll move me over so that I'm cutting right at 12 or just slightly off, maybe at one o'clock. 
but you know current draw was good um that loud noise that you're hearing one is the fan we have two fans in there motor cooling fan because it's electric we got um air blowing through here to cool the motor and then we have a vacuum fan in here plus we're gear driven you know we have a pinion gear that's meshing with a, a metal bull gear to turn the pad and that's where all of our power is coming from you know that's why these edgers are so popular they will remove stock you know they are meant to get the floor flat and any material whether that's finish or stain or wax off in the first pass you know we get to bare wood on the first pass and this this edger is meant to do that you know it has good weight to it it's good balance you know we let the machine cut um you know if we have we really don't have to push and grind with this machine it should just cut on its own if we have the right grip paper on it uh still has a toggle switch for on and off um a good rule of thumb if you don't know or you know the machine the toggle switch in this when you see a slot in the back that's usually the off position for the switch so that's when the contacts are open closed so that slot in the back is usually always off which is why the off tag has a little the off side of the tag has a little um uh, detent in it that fits that so if you ever change your own switch you want that slot to the back and I think we have some videos on YouTube that cover um, you know leveling a pad changing a switch and changing out brushes so that's the 7R take that bag off So Doug says, thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. Any weight grease? Um, you know what? I have to, I'll have to get the, um, the SAE spec on that. I don't have that off the top of my head. They've changed the grease spec in these so many times. Um, and a lot of that was for um, DOT shipping because, and carcinogen and all that stuff. So uh, I will have to get you the SAE number on that grease. I know that we sell it in, Angela, we still sell it in cans? cans. Yeah, we sell it in quart cans um, that you could fill up uh, a grease gun. Again, you have to put a Zerk fitting in there for it. Uh, but it, you know, it went from one grease to a, a lithium to a, so I'll have to get you the SAE number. Uh, and these guys will remind me to do that. And I can answer you on uh, email or Facebook or However, we answer those questions. Thanks. So B2, real quick. Um, same concept. Gear driven. Uh, was the original uh, name was a spinner from American. Uh, you know, Clark has always been the 7R or Super 7R. And then American had the spinner. So whoever bought who, all of that good stuff, um, it's now the American B2 or American Sanders B2. Still a twist lock plug. Uh, the difference, the main difference here, one, you can see the machine height is, is the B2 is a little taller. Uh, the handle assembly on the 7R is just a little bit higher, probably. I don't know, three quarters of an inch to an inch. Um, the B2 has a dual speed. So it's high low. Um, I know probably a handful of guys that actually use the low. Most everybody runs them flat out, full on high. Um, the, I guess the purpose was low speeds um, for higher grit so the floor didn't get burnished. Not sure how true that is but that's, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Um, gear driven, also uh, regular incandescent lamp. Um, has sandpaper on it. We're just gonna sand with it and see, see how it sands. But the big difference here, this is a 5 16 hole, 
meaning seven by five sixteenths of the paper. And I know a lot of guys like running five sixteenths paper because it's kind of self-centering. It, um, huh, look at that. They shipped it with a seven eighths paper. So the five sixteenths um, whole paper just fits right on there and it's automatically centered and then you, you can put it on. So um, you can see with the, kind of have a detent there. Thanks, Angela. So we have 5 16 paper and it just centers itself. Um, this one, I guess they're using the washer to get it centered. Yeah, that's all right. Um, adjusting the B2, it's just a little bit, see how it had to move that around like that? That's 7 8 paper. So if you don't have the washer for it, um, for the 7 8 paper, this has the indented washer that fits 7 8 paper. That's why you don't have to mess around with centering it. So you just make sure the paper is centered on there. So, casters. So this is a caster bracket as opposed to independent casters right here. So the caster bracket, we have to, if we want to adjust the cut up front here, whether it's like what I was talking earlier, 12 o'clock or one o'clock, we have to move the bracket, the whole bracket up and then tilt it. So up in this way or up in this way, the casters themselves are locked in. They have a stem bearing on them um, and they have a bolt that's on the shaft of the caster at the top here. So these are locked in, these are not going anywhere. They do rotate, uh, but they will not go up and down. So the caster bracket, the wrench that comes with the tool fits um, nuts and bolts on this. And then you need um, a socket uh, wrench, Allen wrench to adjust, adjust this up and down. Uh, it's a little more to adjust in the casters on a B2, but I usually use a board and then I look down and see where the daylight is and where the daylight isn't and see what my fan pattern is for the cut. Um, they did adjust the baffling on that here um, to create a better dust pickup and a, a better draw. Again, the fan assembly that is inside here, right in here, uh, is bigger, longer, and thicker blades than they used to be. Um, and this is a two-pole motor. So your brush assembly, I'm actually gonna show you this one. So, you see, it's a two-pole motor. That's the armature that's in there. Um, so this whole thing is the armature. This is the fan assembly, motor cooling. Um, that's the commutator, this part here, the copper part. And obviously a bearing. And that's all up inside here. Now these brushes, they've really come a long way with this brush assembly. Um, this used to be just a very simple two brush. Um, loosen the screw a little bit, put the brush in, make sure the spring action was working and then you're good to go. Um, the way this is housed now with these brush holders, uh, you get a lot less arcing. Um, little trickier to change the brushes in these than it used to be. So these two screws come out, uh, you're gonna, Take the entire assembly, come down and out with it. Uh, and you're gonna do the same inserting a carbon brush assembly into this unit. So just a little trickier. Uh, we do have a video on that, on how to change that. And um, it is, it's a better unit with, with these style brush holders and brushes in them. Um, the carbon on the brushes is a little different. I guess it's graphite as opposed to 
carbon now, but um, so dual speed edger, gear driven. Um, I guess the same. Now that is not a Zerk fitting style thread on that gearbox. So I would take the light assembly cover off to access that. And then you'll be able to just take your grease gun and stick the um, piece right in there as opposed to screwing it on to a Zerk or fitting it onto a Zerk fitting. Um, same concept though, you can run it and see if the grease is touching the gears. Um, and again, I can get you that grease number later. So we do have some baffling back here and skirting on the B2. And this just lets us, you know, just create more dust pickup. Um, you know, the B2 just in its, is, even though it's powerful and, you know, removes a lot of stock, it has had some dust issue pickups, uh, dust pickup issues. So um, having this vacuum assist on there is great and it does work. Um, same idea to change the pad. You want to block up the fan. You can, you know, insert a screwdriver here or through here to get to the uh, vacuum fan. Just put a large screwdriver in there to keep it from moving. And then you're going to put a wrench. Uh, if you don't have a spanner wrench, you can put a, um, this would be a, where a spanner wrench would go. And you can just tap it and then unscrew it. And then once the pad comes off, you can screw a new pad on. Um, if you don't have that, you could take a large screwdriver and get down, there's, a, there's metal behind this rubber. Just get into that rubber or that metal and just tap it and it should come free. Um, again, no, no worries about taking that gear off because that is on there, um, keyed on there. So, so that's it. Um, B2, 7R, Logler Flip, and the uh, Galaxy Radiator Edger. If anybody has any questions, uh, feel free, email us, contact us through Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter, all that good stuff. Doug says, thanks, Joe. It's Doug from Precision Hardwood, Westchester. Hey, what's up, Doug? Um, you're welcome. And uh, like I said, if you have any questions, let us know. Uh, if you have any ideas that you would like to see stuff, you know, we have just about everything here. Um, we try to do content that's helpful, um, but sure, you know, let us know. Uh, we do just about everything that is with, with flooring. All right, have a great day.